Hi guys, um, so in this video, I'll, I'll go over all the questions exam three with you since we didn't have time to finish it today. Okay, so uh, let me do screen sharing so you can see my computer. All right, here we go. All right, so uh, where is it? Yeah. All right, so the first question, um, actually this definition, so the key characteristics of competitive market is what? Uh, so the answer is, you know, you remember for competitive market uh, for or perfect competitions, company produce the same good. Uh, and then there are many, many companies. There's free entry for exit. So number one, the answer will be uh, B, uh, the producers sell identical product. Uh, and then number two, which are following is the characteristics of competitive market. Uh, there are many buyers, many sellers. And then because there are so many of them, uh, nobody can set a price and everybody's price taker. So buyer and sellers are price taker. And that's what made the competitive market so competitive. So nobody have any influence over the price. You take what the price already set for you. Uh, number three, uh, free entry means, uh, it means that um, you know, there must be some way to prevent other country, I mean other company from joining to compete. Uh, let me see, so this one answer should be, uh, um, So here, uh, so no legal barrier prevent a firm from entering the industry, okay? Uh, and then next one, number four, firms can operate in perfectly competitive market, uh, firms that operate in perfectly competitive market try to do what? And then this goes for all the companies, that your goal is to try to max, maximize profit, okay? So answer is C, I mean answer is B. Uh, let's look at the next one. All right, so we we'll have a graph here. Uh, so we we'll have our average total cost and marginal cost. Uh, it says this is a, a competitive market. Now remember, in competitive market, your demand curve is flat. So anywhere you have a price line, that's your demand curve. That's also your marginal revenue curve, and that's also your price line. So the first one says, if the market price is six dollars, what is the firm's short run economic profit? So when you have a market price is six dollars. Um, Get my pen out. Let me draw this. So when you have a six dollar market price right here, so this is the price. This is also your marginal revenue curve. Um, first point looking for is with the marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. Okay. So once you're at that point, uh, go down. Get your quantity. So quantity is three. Um, and then next from three, go to your uh, price line. So this demand curve here. Which price line? Which means our price is at six dollars, which is also set in the question. Um, and the last one from this three quantity go back up to your average total cost curve right here. So here our average total cost is also at six. So profit is your price minus ATC times Q. So six minus six um, times three, and that will be zero. Okay, so for the first, uh, for number five, when the price is six dollars, your quantity should be zero. I mean, your profit is zero. All right, for number six, if the price is ten dollars, how much is our total revenue? All right, so price of ten dollars. So let's draw the price line. So this is the price ten dollars. So that's your price. That's your marginal revenue curve. Uh, at ten dollars, again, looking for with the marginal cost to get the marginal revenue. Um, that will be this part right here. Go down, get your quantity. So quantity is five. Now, it's asking for how much is our total revenue. So total revenue uh, equal to price times quantity. So price is $10, quantity we just found out, which is five here. So five is quantity, so total is $50. That is your uh, total revenue. So answer for this one should be D as David. And then the next one, firm will earn positive economic profit if the market price is how much? Now, if you look at this graph over here, um, that Remember we did the $6, at $6 our profit uh, was zero. So which means anywhere above $6, the company will earn a profit. And then especially if you look at the, the price of 10, at $10, um, at seven, that is your ATC, at 10 is your price. So 10 minus seven times five, then at $10 we have a profit. So anywhere above $6 we have a profit. Okay, so answer for number seven should be C, above $6. 
And number eight, a monopoly market is characterized by what? Uh, so monopoly means you only have one company. Now for a monopoly to stay as a monopoly, so nobody else can join the competition, that means there must be some type of barrier to entry. So no other company can join to compete, so a monopoly company can stay as a monopoly. Um, number nine, the market demand curve from monopoly monopolist is typically so um, for perfect competition your demand curve is flat but for monopoly for monopolist competition and for, for oligopoly your demand curve is downward sloping okay so only for perfect competition demand curve is flat everybody else is downward sloping demand curve uh, number 10 in order to sell more of its product a monopolist must do what so because of the downward sloping demand curve and that's your law of demand it says when the price goes down we buy more when the price goes up we buy less so in order to, in order to sell more good uh, with a downward sloping demand curve the company must lower its price to sell more all right and then number 11 if a monopolist can sell seven unit when the price is four dollars a unit when the price is three dollars then the margin revenue for selling the eighth unit is equal to how much so when you sell a seven unit, uh, your total revenue is seven times four, which is 28. When you sell for uh, a unit, so a times three, that's 24. So this extra unit, uh, your total revenue actually decreased by four. So your margin revenue should be in minus four. Okay, so find out what, what is the, what's the change in total revenue. So for this one, answer is D. All right, and then next, um, Okay, so we have this graph over here. Now, remember, every time you see a graph like this, the first point you're looking for don't don't look at, don't even look at the question. Uh, the first point you want to you want to you want to ask yourself ask yourself is where is the marginal cost equal to margin revenue? That's always the first point. So that will be this intersection right here. Now, once you had the marginal cost equal to margin revenue, go down, get your quantity, which is twelve. So quantity is twelve, and then next from the quantity, go to your demand curve. So right here. And that is the price. So price is 20. And last one from the quantity 12 again, go to your average total cost curve. So at $10, that is your average total cost. All right, so let's answer the question. Um, so in order to maximize profit, monopoly should produce how many units? So this would be 12 units, which is found that out. And then next, in order to maximize profit, the monopoly should charge a price of how much? So price we said is 20. So that's your 20 right here. And the next question, what's your total revenue? So again, total revenue uh, equals to price. Oh man, sorry, my Alexa was talking. So, um, so where was I? Oh, let me erase this. So total revenue, it should be price times quantity. Uh, now again, price was said was $20. Uh, quantity is 12. So this should be uh, 240, that's your, that's a, that's a zero. Okay, so 240 is my total revenue. Uh, there we go. All right, next, uh, what is my total cost? So total cost, uh, so total cost equal to average total cost times quantity. So average total cost we said was $12. Uh, quantity, wait, it was $12 or $10? $10, I think $10, right? So average total cost, $10. So average total cost is $10 times the quantity of 12 so this would be 120 so this is my answer 120 uh, highlight this and then last one what is my profit so profit is your total revenue minus total cost so that'd be 240 minus 120 and then the profit is going to be 120. all right and then next um uh, oligopoly is a market in which um so oligopoly uh, you have few companies, uh, so two, three, four, five, not too many. Uh, they sell either similar or same good. Um, and then because of this, the action of one company will have impact on the other companies. So let's look at which one is the best answer. Uh, so A says there are only a few sellers. Sounds pretty good. Uh, each offering a product similar or identical um, to the pro product offered uh, by the other firm in the market. So this sounds actually very good. You know, I think this is the answer, okay? Um, so let me highlight this one first. Now, uh, B says firms are price takers. That's false because there's only a few companies here. Uh, company, they have an influence on the price, so they're not a price taker. Um, and then next one, the action of one seller in the market has no impact on a seller. That is totally false, okay? So oligopolies, the action of one company always have impact on the, on the, on the other companies. 
Um, and the last one, there are many price taking firms, uh, each offering a product similar or identical to the product offered by other firms in the market. This is just not true. Okay, so, so this is either um, perfect competition or monopolist competition. So to be, a mono to be an oligopoly, you only have a few number of companies. All right, now next one, um, number 18. A monopolistic competitive industry is catalyzed by what? Uh, so again, this guy's this, this is definition. So from monopolist competi competition, you have um, many, many companies. They sell not the same, but differentiated good. And then because there are so many companies, you have free entry, free exit. Now the difference between monopolist competition and a perfect competition, um, perfect competition, everybody sell the same good. Monopolist competition, everybody sell differentiated good. Okay, so for number 18, the answer should be B, many firms and a differentiated product and a free entries. All right, and then number 19, uh, a monopolist competitive firm choose the quantity to produce where, what happens. Uh, so again, this doesn't matter which company you are, it's always marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. So the answer for this one should be C. All right, then let's look at the next one. Um, so we have this graph here. Now, before I look at the questions, let's look at what the graph each one is. Uh, if you if you look closely, see how uh, A, B, and C, you have a, a downward sloping demand curve, and then you have this little margin revenue curve below it. Um, but for D here, your demand curve is perfectly flat. So only time you have a flat demand curve, um, this one, you have a perfect competition. So everybody else, A, B, and C, they're a monopolistic competition. But for D, you have a perfect competition, okay? Um, so let's look at the question. No, okay, before I look at the question, uh, let's look at something else. Now, let's, look at, let's look, at, look at graph A over here. Now remember, every time you see a graph like this, the first thing you're looking for is where the marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. So for graph A, for this point here, marginal cost equal to marginal revenue, that's the point I'm looking for, okay? And then go down, here's the quantity, and then go back up, to your demand curve, so this is the price. And then lastly, from quantity again, go back up to your average total cost curve. This is also your average total cost. So for A, that our average total cost is equal to, pro equal to price. So if you remember the profit formula we have, uh, profit equal to P minus ATC. <laughs> I mean, running out of room here, let me erase this. Okay, so profit equals to P minus ATC times quantity. So for this one, if your ATC equals to P, that means our profit is zero, okay? Now for B, again, we do the same thing. So first point, marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Uh, go down, get your quantity, and then go back up to your demand curve, get the price. And lastly, go back up to your ATC, get your average total cost. So this one, our average total cost uh, is more than P, so it means this company is losing money, okay? Um, and then C over here, again, first point, marginal cost, margin revenue, go down, get your quantity, and then go back up to demand curve, get the price, and lastly, go back up to your average total cost curve, get your average total cost, there. So for this one here, our price is more than average total cost, uh, that means this company, uh, let's see over here, we're making a profit. All right, so let's look at number 20. 20 says, which of following graph depict a short run equilibrium that will encourage entry of other firm into monopolist competitive industry? Now, for, for a monopolist competitive industry, that the short run equilibrium that you can have everything. So you can have either losing money, uh, break even, or profit. Now, if other is if you're encouraging other company to join, that means this this market is making profit. So which of this graph over here is making profit? And we said C, where the P is more than ATC, that company is making profit. So answer for number twenty should be C, should be panel C. Okay. Um, the next one, um, which one depict a short run equilibrium that will encourage exit of some firm from monopolistic competitive industry? So if you're losing money, you want to exit. So for this one, for this panel, panel B here, that where the ATC is more than price, then we're losing money. Okay, so this one answer should be B. And then 22, um, which one will not encourage either entry or exit of firms in monopolist competitive industry? Um, now, if the market is already breaking even, 
nobody want to join and nobody want to exit. So breaking even is the first panel A here where the price equal to ATC, that's a zero profit, that's breaking even. So this one answers A. Uh, next one, which one, which panel depicts up firms in monopolies competitive market earning positive economic profit? So again, we said before positive, that was what, uh, that's profit, that's panel C. So panel C is the answer for 23. And last one, uh, which panel illustrate the short run situation for monopolistic uh, competitive firms? Now, for short run, all three is possible. So A, B, C can all be the answer. So answer for number 24 should be D, all of the above. All right, let's look at number 25. Where is it? So number 25. Um, uh, the simplest type of oligopoly is when you only have two companies. Now, two company is called duopoly. So du duopoly means just two, two powers or so two companies. Uh, number 26, uh, a monopolistic competitive industry is like a purely competitive industry, so it's a so perfect competitive industry. In that, um, so what they have in common, there are many companies in both market, and then there is free entry, free exit. So answer for number 26, that there is no barrier to entry, that everybody can join the market. Now number 27, um, in monopolist competition, there is uh, under allocation of resource at a profit maximizing level output, which means uh, the answer is when the price is more than the marginal cost. Um, so guys, if you go back to your notes, uh, look at under allocation, that's where the answer is. Uh, number 28, in which set of market model that are uh, are there the most significant barrier to entry? So in perfect competition, monopoly competition, you have free to entry. Only in oligopoly, in monopoly, you have this barrier to entry where the oligopoly and monopoly can stay as a monopoly oligopoly. So answer for number 20 should be DS David. Uh, number 29, in which model is there a mutual dependence? So we remember we talked about this uh, prisoner dilemma where the parties can choose either to um, to confess or not to confess. And then your um, decision depends on the action of the other party. So that's called interdependence. So that's oligopoly, okay? So which means you care about the action of the other companies. All right, and then let's look at the next three questions or next four questions. So we have this market here uh, and then each company have a choice. We have Pinnacle and Acme. Uh, they can either do good or poor quality. Um, so before I look at the questions, let's look at what's gonna happen over here. So for each company, if you just look at you know the graph by itself, it looks like that this is the best outcome. That uh, if both companies go for poor quality, well, um, <sighs> fine, pick a time. Oh man, this is so difficult. Um, can I change this to, well, let me do this to eight o'clock, okay? So 8.25, that's when my computer would update. All right, now let me close this, okay. So where was I? Now, if, if the graph, just look at the graph, this is the best outcome for everybody. Now, however, um, that let's suppose Pinnacle go for good quality. If Pinnacle go for good quality, uh, Acme have a choice. If Acme goes for good, um, they will have six million dollar profit. If Acme go for poor, they will have five million dollar profit. Now six more than five million dollars, so Acme should be doing good when Pinnacle is doing poor. Now let's look at the second one here. So if if Acme uh, is doing poor quality, then what should Pinnacle do? I'm sorry. If, if Pinnacle is doing poor quality, what should Acme do? So Pinnacle does poor. Then if Acme do poor, uh, poor, they have seven million. Acme does good, they have A million. So A million is better, then this is Acme's choice. So which means it doesn't matter what Pinnacle does, Acme will always go for good quality. Now, if you, if you look at the other way around, uh, so suppose if Acme does good, what should Pinnacle does? So if Acme does good, uh, Pinnacle do good, they have six. Pinnacle do poor, they have five. So six is better than five, so Acme, uh, Pinnacle choose good. And then if Pinnacle, uh, if Acme goes poor, uh, then if Pinnacle does good, they have eight million. Pinnacle does poor, they have seven million. So this is more. 
So this good quality is Pentacles dominant strategy. So if both parties have dominant strategy, that means if this game is only played once, and then each party is doing what's best for themselves, they will choose dominant strategy, and they will end up over here. So this is called a Nash equilibrium. Now remember, this only happens when the game is played once. But if the game played many, many times, then eventually the, each party learns the rule of the game, then you end up over here where the best outcome is. But if the, otherwise, if game only play once, then you end up at the, the worst outcome for everybody. Okay. So um, so let's look at question. So, so, so number 30, the dominant strategy for Acme is to produce good quality. And then dominant strategy for, for Pentacle is also produce good quality. So answer is A for number 30. And then next one. Um, uh, if game only played once, then most likely outcome is what? So if game only played once, then both parties do what's best for themselves and go for the dominant strategy. And then the answer should be D, that uh, firm produce all produce good qualities. Now number 32, um, now remember on the test, I already gave you the answer for number 32. So number 32 answer is B, okay. We didn't go over what, what Tic Tac uh, strategy is tick for test strategy is so don't worry about it you won't see this you won't see this on the final uh number 33 the most if if the more frequently that this game is played then likely outcome is what so if this game is played many many times then each party learns what's best for them together then they will go both go for the poor quality all right so that's it for this exam three uh guys if anybody have any additional questions um uh, more feel maybe just um feel free to let me know okay and then send me an email or, or send me a message on Google Plus or Handout. I'd be more than happy to have, uh, answer your questions. All right, guys, uh, good luck for tomorrow. It is final, okay? So I will see you guys tomorrow morning.